UFC 193 time. I'm going to be honest. I'm not hyped for this card. Not planning on watching it. Um, the reasons. As much as you have a very high-profile main event, Holly Holm versus Rodriguez, which has a lot of casual appeal to it, the fight itself has very little appeal to hardcore fans, such as myself. And that's not saying you shouldn't watch it. If it appeals to you, it appeals to you. I've never had a problem with people having different ideas of what appeals to them in MMA. My problem has always been when they just really aren't. When they're, they're, they're deluding themselves. Like, this goes back to, I've had a number of rants about people who boo the fight as soon as it goes to the ground, that kind of thing, you know. You know, people who people who seem anti, like, something intrinsic to the sport, such as, we don't want to see ground fighting. And why are you watching? Like, if you like the spectacle of Ronda Rousey and, and that, and that, that, that appeals to you. That's perfectly legitimate. And go ahead. Um, I'm still going to give you my picks, but I'm not going to watch the card myself. Although I'll watch the free portion because it's it's free. Um, I never really hold a free portion of a card or a free card to a particularly high standard. Um, it's always been about you know when you want me to pay. There has to be something I'm willing to pay for. Uh, moving on, Ryan Benoit versus Ben uh, Gwynn. Um, taking Ryan Benoit by probably TKO knockout. Uh, Ryan Benoit is a, is a tremendously flawed fighter in the sense that his offense is is very up there, very very he throws. He he throws. Uh, it can be sloppy at times. It can be technical at other times. Um, but his defense is very very suspect, and it makes me honestly even in this fight uh, nervous about picking him. It's just that I think that. I don't see Ben Gwynn really being able to exploit that. Um, yeah, he knocked out Al Tech and Olskillik, but everything I'm saying about Ryan Benoit, uh, or Benoit, however it's said, uh, can also be applied to Al Tech and Olskillik, uh, only without the offensive portion. Uh, Olskillik's defense is highly, highly suspect. And, uh, ooh, Jesus. I'm bleeding good. Um, Anton Zavur versus Jing Muntasri. Uh, Muntasri by decision. Zafir looks really, 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 really sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan of Muntasri, but given this fight, I'll go with it. Uh, Richard Walsh versus Steve Kennedy. Going with Richard Walsh. Um, pretty big fan of Richard Walsh. He, he fights interesting. Um, this is an Aussie, um, Aussie matchup, I do believe. Uh, Steve Kennedy we saw getting beat up by Peter Sabata. Granted, um... He hasn't really lost to a striker, and that's kind of the thing he has going for him here. But I look at this as a, as a largely striker on striker matchup to a large extent because Kennedy's ground game is pretty suspect. Walsh's ground game is uh, defensively sound enough, but not very strong. But as much as Walsh got pasted um, not too long ago by Alan Joban, um, Alan Joban is. A special kind of fighter. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. And Kennedy is not. Uh, Richard Walsh by TKO. Dan Kelly, Steve Montgomery. Taking Steve Montgomery by decision. Dan Kelly is so bad. Um, Dan Kelly is an Olympic judo from some time ago. I can't remember what games he was in. Uh, but he's in his late 30s now. His athleticism, uh, if it's there, uh, doesn't really show itself. Um, he's not explosive. Uh, nothing he does, and and the problem is, is that outside of his judo, his technical skills in every other facet of the game are really bad, really bad. Just imagine his fight with Patrick Walsh, that was painful. Um, no, I, 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 I have a hard time seeing when I will pick Dan Kelly in a UFC fight. Um, that's how bad that is. Um, Steve Montgomery to win. Uh, Richie Vakulik or Vakulik. Uh, versus uh, Danny Martinez. Uh, Richie was a guy I had a lot of hopes for when he came into the UFC um, via the Tough Nations. Now, mind you, on the Tough Nation show, he was fighting way, 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 way uh, above his weight class. Um, it's been a bad luck run, one and two. That being said, Justin Scoggins is a very, very good fighter. Luis Smoka is a very, very good fighter. Um, they've proven that. And he's won the only kind of gimme fight they gave him. Uh, Danny Martinez is on a three-fight losing streak. And the first two were fine, Chris Carriasso and Scott Jorgensen. But then he lost to Sir Juan Kakai. Um, 
who in turn has lost to Frankie Sentence. Um, yeah, I, going with Vaculic uh, to win a decision, because I don't see how he finishes Martinez. Martinez is, is, is very tough. Um, we'll go with that. GM Volante for Santa Prosh. Uh, GM Volante to win by TKO. Um, Prosh. I think he's almost 40 now. I, I think he, I think he may be over 40. And yeah, 40. Yeah, he actually by a fair bit. 43. Um, you know, and he's he has surprised me in his current UFC run. Um, like looking back at when he came back at UFC 110 to fight Mirko Krokop, um, and and lost. Um, didn't expect much. I mean, I, I suspected he would get some some kind of pity fights. He fought Tom Blackledge, which uh, he won. I had Blackledge in that fight, but you know, it, it was it was a winnable fight. He beat Cyril Dabati because of Cyril Dabati and then Nick Penner, who turned into a bit of a bust. Um, and then got pasted by Ryan Jimmo. Uh, picked up the the TK over <laughs> McAlash, which was hilarious. Uh, lost to Ryan Bader. Beat Guido Nascente, who. Uh, there's another guy who I thought would be good and hasn't been good. Um, and then lost to Sean O'Connell. Um, Volante admittedly is the type of fighter whose defensive gaps and uh, overconfidence might get him caught. But I look at this, I mean, his wrestling I think is good enough to counter Parash. I think his, if it goes to the ground, Parash is better. But I don't see it being enough. And I don't see him being on top of the other thing. And... Volante is a much better striker with a lot of power. Like he's he's better than Sean O'Connell. Um, Volante to win by TKO. Um, moving on, Peter Sabata versus Kyle Nook. Uh, Peter Sabata is like the feel good story of MMA. Like in a lot of ways. Like he came into the UFC way back in 2009. Lost to Paul Taylor, James Wilkes, and Amir Sadala was given his pink slip. Went on a decent run outside of the UCL. Didn't beat anyone particularly impressive. His biggest one was a was a draw with uh, Boris Mankowski. Uh, has come back to the UFC and beaten Paulo Pollock, which was bad. And, Steve and the aforementioned Steve Kennedy. Um, I gotta go with Kyle Noak. As much as Kyle Noak is is very 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 shop worn at this point, um, he still has a good well rounded skill set. Um, defenses somewhat lacking on the ground, and that's where Sabata has been exploiting people. Um, but I, I, I just... I, I can't bring myself to believe in Sabata um, as much as I'd like to. I'd like to have... that. I'd like this to be one of those second-chance stories, um, sort of like Robbie Lawler's, to be honest, in the UFC right now, where a guy comes back from underperforming and comes back to, to be, like, a legit thing. But I don't... I don't feel... Watching Sabata fight and get wins hasn't left me with the tremendous impression that he's a tremendously different fighter now. Um, Jake Matthews, Akbar, Akbar is bad. Jake Matthews to win by decision. Uh, Kyle Noak will take by decision, by the way. Um, moving on. <clears throat> Stefan Struve versus Jarrett Rosholt. Uh, a lot of people are like emphasizing like this is a striker versus striker matchup, but Rosholt is... A fantastic wrestler, and that's what he does. So I'm not really following, to be honest, that 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 point of view. Um, I'm taking him to win here by decision to exploit Struve's um, somewhat lackluster wrestling credentials and the fact that Struve doesn't fight with a tremendous doesn't fight to the tall man stature that he has. This being said, Struve is very good on the ground. He is the better striker of the two. There are openings here, but I'm going to have to go with Rosho. Who has fought in uh, Australia or New Zealand before against South Australia and came out very well in it. Uh, Robert Whitaker versus Uriah Hall. We go back on fourth in this one. Um, I'm not going to beat a dead donkey here at this point. Uriah Hall, fantastic, fantastic potential. Fantastically inconsistent. Um, moving on. Uh, Robert Whitaker is a very good uh, striker um, and has been getting a lot better. I was very impressed with his victory over Brad Tavares. I thought the move to middleweight would be a bad one. Um, he's proven me wrong so far and I think two to three fights. can't remember if Mike... No, Mike, Mike Rhodes was his last welterweight fight. Um, 
What up in weight class to fight Clint Hester? Brad Tavares got, you know, fights that I thought he would lose um, because of the size difference, and he came out and he he proved me wrong. Um, he's a legitimate prospect. Maybe the weight cut really was um, his problem because you look at like his his performance at uh, at welterweight was it was not it was not great. I mean, it was three and two, and the only two fighters who I think are still on contract are the two that beat him: Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and Court McGee. Um, Speaking of which, when is Court McGee going to fight again? Uh, man, Court McGee is only 30. Um, anyways. I'm taking Whitaker because Whitaker is a guy that can... that Whitaker is a guy that goes out there and exceeds my expectations. Uriah Hall is a guy who who seldom hits my expectations. Yeah, he over-exceeded against Gegard Musasi, but that might be the first time... Um, Whitaker to win here by decision should be a pretty entertaining bout. I'm actually I, like this. This is the one on the main card that I would uh, one of the two on the main card that I would pay money to see, um, but not enough to justify the entire pick. Mark Hunt, Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Um, I'm tempted to say do not pick. Uh, these two drew, of course, in a fantastic fight. Uh, I want to get my time frame right here. Um, there it is. Uh, back in 2013, so it's been about a little under two years, about 23 months. Um, since then, the Super Simone's gone one and two with victory over Roy Nelson and lost to Fabrizio over Doom and Steepy Emoji. No shame there. It's just that you feel at 41 years old, it's father time is there on Hunt, and his skill set is still kind of limited. Um, Bigfoot Silva, you could say the absolute same for, though, uh, since the Markov fight knocked out by both Andre Arlovsky and Frank Mir, and then beat So Palele in a fight that more or less sent <laughs> So Palele into retirement. Um, <sighs> Mark Hunt is still fighting competitively against some of the top, guy, top guys in the division, and Bigfoot isn't. I'm going to go with Mark Hunt here to win by TKO. Bigfoot, I think the chin is gone. I really do. And Hunt is the guy who can capitalize on that and just put him away. So let's go with Mark Hunt. Uh, Yoani J check versus Valerie Letourneau. Um Just a joke of a title fight. Uh, I mean, Letourneau's 3-0 in the UFC being Elizabeth Phillips, Jessica Bracosi, and... Marina Moros. A lot of fans don't know who those three fighters are. They should know Rickos and Moros. Uh, Phillips is kind of just filler. But didn't look... Did not look super impressive in any of those. Um, it's more that Moros and Rickosi just didn't look good. And, and you could... And like the Elizabeth Phillips fight was, was very close. So Elizabeth Phillips after that loss to Milena Dudiev. And then beat, you know, everyone's favorite punching bag, just Duke. Um, that's not terribly impressive. Uh, where does Letourneau have an advantage in this fight? It, it's not on the feet. Um, it could be on the ground, but we've seen people who are better at trying to take it to the ground than her completely fail against Yen Jacek. Um, you know, this is a good, you know, continuous showcase fight for Yen Jacek where she shows off her great clinch game. Her ability to just punish you when you're going for takedowns. Her very, very good stand-up. Um, and I see this going the same way we've seen the Jessica Penne fight and the Carlos Esparza fight go. Uh, Letourneau basically going for takedowns and basically getting her face wrecked. Um, however, it's a bigger joke in the upcoming fight. Um, Ronda Rousey versus Holly Holm. Holly Holm is an undefeated fighter at 9-0. Her biggest win is Marion Renault, though. She arguably lost to Raquel Pennington. Everyone else she's fought, except for Jan Finney, is completely irrelevant. And Jan Finney's like this like tough um, journeyman fighter that almost everyone beats on their way up and has lost her last five fights. Um, this is ridiculous. This is a promotional point. And... The one thing that really particularly bugs me about this fight is that it, it seems like the UFC is putting on Ronda Rousey onto a fight card. 
and it's going to like be like, we can draw numbers on nothing. We don't need Cyborg. And I'm not saying they need Cyborg. I'm saying if you are the biggest MMA promotion in the world, we're the best come to fight, and so on, Cyborg belongs in there if she can make 135 effectively. I don't think she can. I've kind of gone, I've, I've said this a couple of times, like she fought pretty big at 145. You look at her neck next to male fighters like Frankie Edgar, a former 155 pound champion, currently 145 pound fighter. She is big compared to him. So I don't really see if she can do it. But this seems almost like the UFC just saying, shut up. No matter who we put Ronda Rousey against, the buy rate is huge. And also, really, not much of an undercard to this. I mean, Hunt Silva, sure, has nostalgia appeal to it, but, I mean, really, what other fight are you dying to see? Like, Whitaker and Hall is going to be a good fight, but it's also a fight that doesn't make a lot of sense for your eye Hall. You beat Gegard Musasi and step down to fight Robert Whitaker. Um, it's weird matchmaking. Um... Rousey is going to destroy Holly Holm. Holly Holm is a better striker in a kickboxing match. She is not a better striker in MMA. We've seen this. She does not do well when you crowd forward and mix grappling in with the striking game and are aggressive. And Rousey is going to do that. Excuse me. Ugh. Um, and, and on the ground, this is no contest. In fairness... In fairness, this is Rousey against the entirety of the women's 135-pound division. Still, it feels like you should have to earn your title shot more against Rousey than we've seen recently with Betch Cohea and now Holly Holm. At least with the other ones, it's like you are legitimately like top five in the division and you have some wins to prove it. And we have a fight here that just doesn't. Um... That's all there is to it. I mean, I don't know what you do. She's so far ahead of the rest of the division that I, I, I honestly don't know what you do. Because, like I said, your interesting fight is to bring in Cyborg, a woman we do not know if she can make weight. And if she does make weight, we don't know how good of a fighter she's going to be. For people who have never cut weight before, it's not just a matter of making the weight. Um, at one point during my he boarded and maker. Uh, I tried to make 170 um, as well. I made it. The scale read 170, um, and I wasn't dead. Um, but if you would ask me, you're gonna fight in 24 hours, and the IV bands, you know, off as it is now, and so on. I would have been done in the first round, and that's assuming a fighter of like. That's assuming I wasn't there just to get beat up. Like that's assuming a fight where I would have under normal circumstances, had a legitimate shot of winning. Um, it wasn't going to happen. And that's kind of the same thing I bring up with the Cyborg thing. Is like, can she make 135? Probably. Um, people can make very much lower weights, but can she fight after having made that weight? <sighs> that's a tough call. That is a, that is a, that is a tough sell. Um, there's also some thoughts that maybe they'll announce that fight after this because, of course, Zufa does have a contract uh, via the Invicta with Cyborg. I've said it before. Rousey doesn't have to take that fight unless she can make weight. And there's no reason Rousey should. Um, but MMA fans should probably want that fight. If they want to see Rousey in a good fight, because I struggle to think of a time where we've seen it. I mean, the, you know, some of the Misha Tate fights had moments, uh, but of course, you had some surprisingness with uh, Liz Carmouche early in their fight. But that's about it. Uh, and for me, I've, I've always been after good fights. Uh, also, just on the, the topic of the UFC and its 
we're the biggest fight fighters in the world, and we the best fighters come fight here. You have people retiring because they're losing money. Go fix that. There you go. That is all. Have a good one. If you choose to order the fight card, I'm enjoy it. Um, I just won't be.